Hello and welcome to Dream Space from Factory International with me, Gemma Kearney. I'm a broadcaster, an art lover, a daydreamer, and I've always been a little bit obsessed with the power that our own minds have when you give them the space to run wild, when you let your imagination dream up whole worlds. In every episode of Dream Space, we're inviting a special guest to take over our imaginations, to create their ultimate dream space, transporting us to a place filled with whatever they want and encounter their ideal lineup of art, music, inspiration, and much, much more. We want to push the boundaries of what is possible and create new visions together. Asking the question, what kind of art does the world need right now? Inventing tomorrow together. There's no limit to dreams, so open your mind, get relaxed and let's get dreaming. Today, our dreamer is poet, writer, playwright and broadcaster, Lem Sisse. Lem's work often centres on ideas of home, the underlying universal experiences of loss, rejection and healing in his work have resonated with audiences across the globe and resulted in numerous accolades, including an OBE for his services to literature and charity, the Penn Pinter Prize in 2019 and a BAFTA nomination. Lem was the official poet of the 2012 Olympics in London, but Manchester is where he made his home age 18. There he found community and has helped create it too. His poem, Hardy's Well, adorned the outside of a local pub for 30 years and became a beloved landmark in the city. And in 2015, he was appointed Chancellor of the University of Manchester for a seven-year term. As well as spanning a building's facade, Lem's work features on stage, radio and television with subjects crossing jazz and the experiences of care leavers to his own time in foster care. In 2021, for Factory International, Lem co-curated Poet Slash Artist, a group exhibition where the lines between poetry and visual art were blurred with artists from both disciplines featured. And for MIF 23, Lem played the voice of God in Noah's Flood, a community opera collaboration with Manchester Collective and Slung Low. This is Lem Sisse's Dream Space. I'd like to see people being their best, creating a space which gives everybody who enters it an experience which they'll never forget. We're constantly placed in boxes. This is new art. This is art of older people. But actually, creativity is timeless. And actually, artists are united by creativity. But we're constantly separated in the galleries, on the stages, in the musical spheres. And it's, it's wrong to do so. In my dream space, the older artist and the younger artist can sit and eat and laugh and learn from each other. Not so long ago, I did an exhibition in Manchester uh, called Poet Slash Artist, where we gathered poets and artists who are poets from all around the world, from Tracy Emin to uh, indigenous Native American artists to a 20-year-old poet from Moss Side in Manchester. It was just invigorating to have the older artists, some of who've passed away now, stand alongside the younger artists. Look, in the society that I'm living in now, there are people who will say, you know, there are ivory towers being built, you know, there are gatekeepers, and we, we need to build our own ivory tower with our own gatekeeper. <laughs> so all that you have there is a forest of ivory towers with gatekeepers. I don't want that to be the case. In my dream space, there are no ivory towers. So what does your dream space look like in that case we know what it doesn't and i love the visual of a forest is it more natural what does it look like and how does it interconnect well let's say that nature is the uh, ruler of the 
dream space of mine. Let's let's just say that. Let's say we have trees as wise spirits, like the tree in Avatar. Let's say that trees hold all the wisdom of, of my dream space. And let's say that you can walk through any door at any time, from any house. There'll be a place in my dream space which is just constantly sunrise. So you'll be able to sit on a hill and watch the sunrise over the horizon, across the sea. Beautiful. And then it would it would do it immediately again. It would go down and then immediately come up again. There'd also be another place, which is on the side of a mountain, where you could sit and look out across the horizon. And that's a sunset. And you'd be able to go to the sunset place and watch the sunset every day. How cool is that? I like it a lot. And I'll tell you what, you'd be able to have headphones on, right? Everybody who's sat on the side of the mountain watching the sunset, be able to have headphones on, watch the sunset while listening to your favourite music with your friends. I mean, come on. How nice is that? You'd be able to say to your friends, hey, should we go sunset? Yeah, all right. Yeah, let's meet you at sunset. How cool would that be? Do we see other visuals along the way? Anything that is not from nature? Are there any structures that are man-made? I was going to say I'm a great fan of architecture. No, I'm not. I come into an interview, I'm like, oh, I'm a great fan of architecture. Really, Lem? Are you really? Jeez, Louise, come on. But I believe in creating unique spaces and buildings which are not carbon copies of the building next to them so i think we would have a very inventive architecture uh, which was not about skyscrapers at all it was all about um, lived spaces which were counterintuitive to, to what we have in our cities now more curved spaces would you reference anywhere that you visited in this moment of looking and thinking about the aesthetics of your dream space so i would have a beautiful lush green forest area with waterfalls that catch the light inside them and that would be ethiopia and then i would have a place where women would gather to heal you with nature's uh, resources so you would be able to go if you were not feeling well and they would be able to say ah i know exactly what it is that you need and they would go out or they would send their sons out or whatever to find the right herbs to make you feel better and that would be the caribbean and then i would find a place where people will show you the kindest hospitality that would make you weep with a sense of self knowing who you are and that would be Afghanistan I would choose all of the parts of cultures that are are around the world that are counterintuitive to what people think that they know about them and I would take the best of that culture and have it somewhere in different clearings in the forests We're so closed off in our society at the moment. We know so little about the world, and yet we're fed, we're constantly fed with negative ideas about the world. I would have a place which was the healing of China. So much in the world that's so beautiful that we're missing out on because of the news feed which is telling us how to think about other cultures. It's just so destructive. I have noticed that In the real world, a lot of us seem to be carrying a normalised sense of fear. Yeah. I don't know whether that is a symptom post-pandemic where it was frankly scary. Yeah. Or whether it is overwhelm of information that we have so accessible to us in these devices that have become and part of our bodies almost. I always feel like my phone is like an extra limb or something. (laughs) Yeah. But how would we shape that day-to-day anxiety when we come into your dream space. I love this idea of hospitality, remedy, herbal medicine, naturist beauty, but 
it takes a bit of time, doesn't it, to shake what's been going on. Yeah, it does. How would that be cultivated? I used to think that I was motivated to write um, poetry by anger and the need to, you know, fix things. The truth is, is, is that most of all, I was fixing myself. I was getting out my own anger. Bitterness rots the vessel that carries it. It's the same with anger. Anger rots the vessel that carries it. Anger can sometimes drive you to do some great things, but if you depend on anger to do great things, then you'll, you will be broken in the end because the anger will turn in on yourself. I really believe that. So my dream space, number one, will have the currency of kindness. That's the currency, that is the financial currency. Whenever you need something, you have to do something for somebody else. Okay, so if I need uh, a coat, then I have to give away something that's mine to somebody else. And then I may get a coat. But the richest currency, the thing that will make you richer, is when you give without a reason. Okay, so the currency of my dream space is kindness. If you want something, you have to give something away, firstly. And secondly, if you give something away without wanting something, you will get more. We're really excited to be here in these dreams. Whose work do we experience and how? Are you going to be giving a platform to different artists? Oh, 100%. Ida Mullany. She's an Ethiopian photographer. She runs the Addis Photo Fest, which is the second biggest photo festival in Africa. She is an extraordinary woman. I've known her for some years now. I would commission Ida Mullany to take photographs and then somehow to make the entire dream space her gallery. Maybe I would get her to hang her photographs from the clouds. She's just incredible. She's an incredible woman. I would invite in a co-curator, that being Hans Ulrich Obrist from the Serpentine Gallery in the centre of London. You must go and see some of what Hans Ulrich Obrist is doing there and what he's doing with four artists of colour. It's just extraordinary in the work that's going on there. And I would invite the Addis Fine Art Gallery to hang their um, contemporary Ethiopian artists in schools, shops. Um, I'm not sure I would have shops in my dream space, actually. When it comes to music, I would commission Loyal Kana to write the soundscape and the wordscape for a place where there's constant sunrises. I would commission Arlo Parks to write music and songs for the cities in my dream space. Why those artists? Both of them are great thinkers. Loyal Karner is in a different league. He is stratospheric, I think, when it comes down to his attention to the lyric and to his journey as an artist. He's, he's further, much further on than Arlo is um, in terms of he's been around for longer. And, and I would definitely have Kay Tempest in there as well. They are doing something quite special as well. I would have a, the Ethiopian artist Mulatu Astakke. I think he must be in his late 80s now. He's been travelling the world for the past few years Yeah, with, with his uh, troupe. Are there any smells or food? OK, cocoa butter. Definitely, I'm, I'm from the United Federation of Cocoa Butter. That's the UFCB. <laughs> Okay, that, that the UFC is such a federation. I, I didn't meet a person of colour until I was about nine years of age. And I didn't know a person of colour until I was about 16 years of age. And it was mainly the Caribbean community of Manchester who introduced me to their culture, which I took as my culture. I didn't know any better. But it's a beautiful thing because cocoa butter was one of the first things like... My foster parents, when I was a kid, took me to the doctors because I had grey knees. <laughs> sorry, I'm can sorry you believe it, Gemma? Like I know it's okay. No, of course you can laugh. <laughs> took me to the doctors because I oh. had grey knees and grey elbows. Oh, wow! I come to Manchester, 
And my first um, ever gig uh, on stage was with the Abyssindi Women's Cooperative. It's all black women, middle of Moss Side, and they did an event with a band called African Dawn in the mid 1980s. And I got up there to read my poetry in my local Wigan accent with my dreadlocks. And here's the thing, Cocoa Butter Man, it's like it was the smell of the future. You know what I mean? It was like, oh my God, this is, this is like, you know, and this whole idea of having dry skin, I had no idea what, it, you know, it was a joke, it was this, that, the other. And so it was part of my awakening. So I would like to have the smell of cocoa butter as one of the smells of my dream space. It can happen. And I don't think anyone's going to complain because it's a universally wonderful smell. And so nostalgic in so many ways for so many of us. Yes, yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. I wonder whether it is from a time, actually, yeah, whether it's not, you know, whether young people, it's not the same now. There's so many products out there. But the Palmer's Cocoa Butter, that was probably fully chemical-ridden, who knows, you know, but... I mean, it got rid of your grey elbows. It got rid of my grey elbows, yeah. And it made me, actually, you know, it gave me a sense of being who I am. It was, I was literally looking after my skin the same skin that I'd been denied of for, for so many years you know so um, yeah I think the smell of cocoa butter would be really good I'm just getting such a sense of nourishment from your dream space yes, yes that visual yeah, yeah, nourishment good. yeah man that sensory like that. replenishment it makes me think well should I have like a fight club <laughs> you know what I mean should there be like a space like look if you want to kick some you know ass just go in here and you can have a fight, but it's in this particular place. But I don't know, actually half of me thinks, okay, if I love the idea as a place to let off steam. I love that. But I'd love it maybe if you, like, were given a baby, you know, as yeah. you ate it. And you had to look after it. <laughs> <laughs> Just for a day, you know. <laughs> Just to calm you right down. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, to show you what it's like to, I don't know, to have to take responsibility for another human being. I've got a line from a little four line poem. It's Night can't drive out night, only the light above. Fear can't drive out fear, only love. And that would be like our, the mantra, I think, of my space as well. Is that one of your poems? It is, yeah. <laughs> Get me on poems in there. Definitely. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> would you perform for us? In the dream space? No, no, because I, I would be like a... I'd like to be a curator, so I'd just like other people to be able to be their best at what they do. I mean, I will if people want me to, you know. That's not a problem. I don't know, my life's all about me at the moment, and that's all very nice. But uh, I think in my dream space, it would be about other people being the best that they can be. Here we are in this imaginarium, a forest which includes different natural landscapes from Ethiopian inspired waterfalls that capture light, a hilltop where we can watch the sun set and rise on repeat. We can listen to the sounds of K Tempest if we find ourselves in a more urban area, Arlo Parks will sing to us. If we're somewhere else in the forest, Loyal Kana's lyricism will fill our minds. The smell is cocoa butter. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Beautiful photographs hang from the clouds. Do we eat anything? Yeah, I mean, I, I think every culture has its best food. So we'd have Dorowat and injera from Ethiopia. We'd have any kind of smoked fish from the Jewish community or bagels, cream cheese or salt beef uh, bagels with um, mustard. Biryani from Bangalore. Dumplings from various parts of China. We'd have sushi. From, I mean, we just have the best of each culture's food just at different spots around the place. People will often travel abroad and then they come back here and they'll say, oh, the food was wonderful. 
but if the food is wonderful so are the people and you should always say that when you come back from a country I think it's very belittling when you say oh yeah the food was great well what about the people the fact is if the food is good it says a lot about the people how fused do you think art food souls poetry painting actually is because I am starting to see these things as one and I know I'm not alone you are not alone no Jude Kelly who ran the South Bank Centre through some would say its best years uh, the West Yorkshire Playhouse who started the Battersea Art Centre runs a, an arts company called Metal Metal is arts activities from the kitchen and so they'll have food where artists come just to break bread with each other and talk and uh, hang out and it's such a great idea no i think i think it's all connected and i would say that food it's not just fuel for us to continue life it is life in itself do you think there'll be a lot of us in your dream space or is it um an experience that potentially meditative and and solo how do we feel about other physical presence you know i want everyone in there so i want everyone in my dream space yeah man i want it to be popular i want it to be packed but there's got to be space for peace as well so you can have your cake and eat it how much of the written word is weaved into your dream space i've just realized um all the graffiti because there's got to be graffiti there's got to be graffiti in my um, in my dream space, but it's all by women. All the graffiti is by women, and I'd just be really fascinated to see what that looks like. I love that. Uh, I'd just be fascinated to see how that manifests. I couldn't know, but I just know it would be fundamentally different in some way, shape, or form. Firstly, it would be like all the graffiti that's already been done, but actually, after a while there would be talk and conversation about what it could be and where it should be and how it should be, etc. And I think that would lead to a, a brand new experience of what graffiti is. Creativity is not the monopoly of artists and that it is something which is in everybody. And in my utopia, in my dream space, each person would be able to realise their creative potential. The most creative place on the high street is probably the hairdresser because it's there that you go, your face is reshaped by this curated form. You feel both internally and externally changed when you've been to the um, hairdressers. You are vulnerable when you stand there, sit there looking into yourself in the mirror, but yet you're reformed when you leave the place. So those are experiences that an artist would die for if you were to experience the same thing coming into an art gallery and looking at their art. So in my dream space, each person would realise that creativity is not the monopoly of artists and it can just as much be in the car mechanic who can understand a car by putting their hand on the bonnet and turning it on, you know, and, um, uh, with the keys, as it is in a poet who writes a poem. Perhaps that's part of this. We are elevated in mind and spirit to feel worthy of creating in any way we want to. The reason that that's beautiful is because then people start to realise their own power. And I think that's why people are often told that they're not creative, because creativity encourages non-linear thinking, and non-linear thinking says, no, I'm not going to be put in that box. No, you're not going to treat me like that. You know, I'm not going to be, etc., etc." Realising your creativity is to realise your power. Oh, by the way, I would just love there to be classical music, like Sibelius, the Swan of Lake Tuanila, I would love there to be some classical music somewhere so that people could maybe listen to it at sunset as well. Mixed in with Loyal. Lem, we are reaching the end of this beautiful dream. A place with no boxes, no Absolutely. particular category. 
Yeah. That welcomes everybody and we all find mutual power multi generationally. Oh, thank Come you on. so much. <laughs> <laughs> I feel powerful. <laughs> That's great. Welcome to the dream space. I'm Gemma Kearney and you've been listening to Dream Space from Factory International. Today you heard Lem's vision. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure that you like and subscribe to this podcast because your support really does mean a lot. And if you enjoyed this, then we have got a vault of other episodes to dive into. You can be transported into the dreams of musician Nabia Iqbal or actor Maxine Peake or filmmaker Jen Nakuru. These and all the other artists featured in this series of Dream Space are available on Factory International's website. So head there to find more artistic content on Factory Plus. Thank you for the visions to all of the incredible artists who have joined us on this series and you, the listeners who have come on board. Keep on dreaming and I'll see you next time. Dream Space was hosted by me, Gemma Kearney, and today's episode was produced by May Lee Evans. This series was also produced by Katie Callan and Tess Davidson, with sound design by Femi Oriogan Williams and theme music by Carmel Snickersgill. The executive producer is Dan Jackson, and it is a reduced listening production for Factory International, curated by Scott Smith and Alex Mannion-Jones. <laughs>